frequently in the county, uh, we say that we are more interested in substance or form. That is, we look for the underlying economic transaction as opposed to the legal transaction. And that frequently occurs uh, when we have manufacturers' incentives uh, that allow businesses to purchase goods or services uh, at a value uh, at, with a uh, credit rate uh, that it is a bargain deal. You've heard many times on TV, uh, automobile companies uh, advertising zero interest for a length of time for the purchase of a vehicle. Well, in accounting, we say that, in fact, there always is interest. If you're using value over time, there is a charge, a rent, for the use of that value. So in the FASB codification, in topic area 825, we talk about interest rates. And in 2525, we talk about what happens when we have a arrangement that uses either non-interest bearing notes or a note with an unrealistically low interest rate. So here are some quotes from uh, the FASB code. And let's start off by looking at Section 25A. This tells us that when we exchange a note for property, we're going to record the note and the property at the present value of the consideration exchanged. And in the glossary, present value is defined as a tool that allows us to come up with a value using future cash flows and a discount rate. When we have this situation, any difference between the face amount of the note and the present value of the cash flows related to the note will be accounted for either as a discount or premium. What are these? These are valuation accounts. Also called contract accounts. We will carry the note in our books at the face amount of the note, a premium or discount will be used to bring that carry value, that is the amount that we will ultimately show on the balance sheet, to fair value. So at any given point in time, the face amount of the note, plus or minus the balance in the premium or discount, will give us the carry value. When we have notes with unrealistic interest, we're going to use a interest rate that will allow us to estimate the current value of the note in a way that is similar to the cash price that we will pay if we had paid cash instead of the note. The code tells us that the amount that we're going to carry the equipment out may or may not be the same amount as the note. And any difference, again, is going to be accounted for either as a discount or a premium. Now, how do we determine this interest rate? Well, in the next section, in 2511, GAP tells us that when we have this situation, we're going to use an imputed rate of interest. And 
the imputed rate of interest is an approximation of what we believe would be a fair or realistic rate that we would pay if we were going to go out and secure this note, say through bank financing as opposed to a special rate that was given to us by the manufacturer. So for our example, we're going to use a, a problem we did in a workshop, and that's exercise 14-7. And we have a comp company uh, that has purchased a custom-made piece of equipment from the manufacturer. Instead of paying cash, the manufacturer offered us a very sweet deal where we would sign a note for six hundred thousand dollars that is going to be for three years with a very low interest rate of four percent and we're going to pay interest only once a year at the last day of the year we cannot determine the cash price of the lake but we knew if we had to go out and borrow money to purchase a lake we would probably pay interest of twelve percent so, let's go about first by determining the fair value of the note. And remember, this is going to be the carry amount that we're going to show the note on the liability side of the balance sheet. It's also going to be the value that we're going to place on the equipment that is going to be on the asset side. And the difference between the face amount of the note and the fair value of the note is going to signify future interest so in this example we're going to have a discount we're going to have a face value of the note that is higher than the carry value of the note and the difference represents future interest expense so let's go about with our calculation our principal amount of the note is six hundred thousand the note carries a 4% rate of interest. The imputed rate we're going to use is 12%. And now we need to determine the cash flows that are represented in this note. So we're going to have interest only payments for three years. But at, in, th in year three, we're going to have also the repayment of interest. So let's compute the annual interest, that is going to be the principal amount of the note times the contract amount. So we'll make payments of $24,000 a year. In year three, we're going to pay back the principal plus the interest. So we'll have three cash flows. To determine the present value, we can use the Excel formula for net present value. And that will be found under the financial formulas. And we're looking for NPV. And net present value gives us the present values of these future cash flows uh, at a given rate of interest. And remember, in our example, we're going to use the imputed rate of interest, which is 12%. Now we can enter the individual values here, or we can simply highlight the cells that represent the cash flow. Click OK. And the cell is going to return us the present value of the note, and that is 484,712. Now that becomes the value of the equipment that we are purchasing. So we will debit the equipment for the fair value. The note will be carried on the books at the face amount. The difference between the 
fair value of the equipment and the face of the note will be in this case a discount. The discount will have a debit balance because it is contra and the note fail. So the discount will be the face amount of the note minus the present value of the cash flows. And that gives us our discount. Next, we're going to look at the amortization of this discount. And since this is not an installment, we'll be looking at the interest-only payments. And remember, our interest payments are $24,000 per year. We ignore the principal repayment in year three. The interest will be based for the payment on the contract amount. However, for our accounting records, the interest expense, so what we're dealing here is with interest expense as opposed to cash interest payment. And the difference between the two will be a reduction of the discount. So our interest expense is going to be based on the carry value of the note prior to the interest payment. In this case, it's uh, 484.712. We've done no amortization. And we're going to multiply that by our computed rate of 12%. The reduction is the interest expense minus the cash payment. And after that, we will have a new carry value. Which will be the old interest plus the reduction in the discount. As we make a payment, the carry value of the note will move to ultimately the face amount, so the discount is added to the profit balance. At this point, we can copy and paste our formulas. And as you see, every time we make a payment, the carry value of the note increases until we add to the last interest payment, which brings us to the face amount which we would then repay. So over the course of the note, we'll have cash payments of $72,000. But we'll recognize interest expense of $187,288. So we'll have more interest shown on the income statement than will be shown as cash payment. Now, ultimately, All of the cost of acquiring this equipment will show up on the income statement because remember, we're using a lower value for the equipment. That is going to be the basis for the appreciation. So the accounting here is not for a difference in the ultimate cost of the equipment, $600,000 versus $400,000. It will, six hundred thousand will be expense, but it will be accounted for less through depreciation expense and more than interest expense. So each journal entry, time we have a payment of the interest, we'll use the interest expense from the annualization table. We're going to be reducing down our discounted note to the credit, and then we're going to have our credit. And we will continue to do that for each of our interest payments.